Today we're going to be looking at the study guide for our statistics test. Let's get started. Let's look at number one. The points scored by a basketball team in its last six games are shown below. Show all your work. Let's find the mean, median, and range of the following data set. Remember, mean means average. And to find the average, I need to add up all the numbers and divide by the number of numbers. So I'll take all these numbers here and I will literally add them up. Okay, so pause the video and uh, come back in just a minute and see if you get the same thing as me. When I added all my numbers up, I came up with 471. Since there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 numbers, I'll go ahead and divide by 6. And when I divide by 6, I get 78 and 5 tenths. So my mean for this data set is 78 and 5 tenths. Let's take a look at number 2. We need to find the median. And remember, median means in the middle. It's important to remember that we must put these numbers in order from least to greatest. But they're not quite there yet. Let's pause the video and put our numbers in order from least to, least to greatest. Now I put my numbers in order from least to greatest. Did you get the same thing as me? So what I'll do to find the middle number is I'll mark off each side until I get to the middle. Notice how I have even numbers on both sides. Now, I've got to find the middle number between 77 and 84. Okay, so what I need to do is I need to add these up and divide by 2. When I add these up and divide by 2, I end up with a median of 80.5. So, my median then for number 2 is 80.5. Take a look at number 3. We're going to find the range of this data set here. Remember, the range is when you take the biggest number and you subtract it from the smallest number. In this case, we'll subtract 115 minus 37. And when I subtract 115 minus 37, we get 78. So the range for this data set is 78. Look at number four. Which measure mean or median best describes the typical number of points scored. So remember we're looking for the middle number or, or the average of the following data set here that actually represents the data. Does the mean and the median actually give a fair assessment of the points scored? Well remember our mean and median are 78.5 and 80.5. I would say that's a pretty fair assessment of the point scored. Because if you look at the other numbers there, it appears to be about in the middle. So I would say that not just one, but both describes number of points equally well. Number five, Frank wants to know how many people live in each household in this town. He conducts a random survey of ten people and asks how many people live in their household. This is also shown below. So we're asked to find the MAD or the, or the mean of the following list of numbers here. So we need to find the MAD of this data set here. So you're going to want to use the charts I gave you to fill in this information. So I'll pause the video and I'll fill some information in and then I'll ask you a few questions. Click on your data sheet, I took a minute and I wrote all 10 numbers um, below. Okay. Um, so now that all 10 numbers are written below, I need to find the mean of those numbers. Remember to find the mean, you have to add up all the numbers and divide by number of numbers. And after I do that, I end up with 4. So my mean for all these numbers is 4. Continuing to follow the graphic organizer, we need to find the difference. When we find the difference of each number, we end up with this here. Now that we found the difference, we have to find the positive value since it's absolute value deviation. When I find the positive values, I end up with these numbers here. The next step is to find the sum. And when I add up all the numbers, I get 16. There's 10 total numbers, so 16 divided by 10 is 
So my mean absolute deviation for this question is 1.6. Number six asked us to find the mean. Well, we already did that. That was four. It says, what conclusion can you draw about the typical number of people in each household? Explain. Okay, so, okay. So what conclusions can you draw about the typical number of people in each household? <clears throat> well, the average is four, but the number of people varies greatly because the mad, the mad is almost 50% of the mean. That's a significant difference. Um, almost half of the mean. Okay, so that's what I can conclude about the typical um, typical number of people in each house. The daily high temperatures for some some days last month are shown below. Make a box plot of the data. Before we can make a box plot, we have to put our numbers in order from least to greatest. So pause the video and put our numbers in order from least to greatest. Okay, so now I put my numbers in order from least to greatest. In order for me to make my box plot, I have to find the median of my data set here. Okay. So after I cross off all my numbers from side to side here, an equal amount on each side, I'm left with 83 and 84. In between 83 and 84 is 83.5. So that'll be my Q2, Q2, my quartile 2. Now I have to find the median of the upper half of my data here. We don't want to include the 83.5 in our upper quartile median. So I have 84, 85, 88, 89, 92, and 94. So in between 88 and 89 is 88.5. That'll be my Q3. Now that I found my Q2 and my Q3, I need to find out what my Q1 is. So I'll do the same thing. I'll cut off six numbers, and in between 78 and 79 is 78.5. So there's my Q1. So we put our numbers in order from least to greatest. We found our Q1, our Q2, and our Q3s. Now we're ready to make our box plot. So I'll start off by putting my Q2 on my number line here. Okay, so now I'll go and put my Q2 right here. Okay. I've already listed my lowest, uh, my lower extreme here, so I've done that. Now I've got to list my Q1. And it looks like that's going to be about right here. And then finally I have to list my Q3, which is 88.5. And then I have to actually do one more thing, which is list my upper extreme, my max. Okay, so now I've got to make my box plot. So I'll make my box here, box here, and then I've got my upper extremes, and I've got my lower extremes. There we go, we've completed our box plot. Great the job. The box plot compares the ages of dancers in two different dance troops. Um, let's answer a few questions. What is the IQR of group A? What is the IQR of group A? Pause the video and try this on your own. The IQR is Q3 minus Q1. We're literally minusing the inside ranges of the boxes, the IQR. And when you subtract Q3 from Q1, you get four. So my inner quartile range is four. B says, what is the IQR of group B? So I'm looking here at group B, and I want to find the range between these two quartiles. So if this is 26, and this looks like this is about 21.5, because it's not quite 21. So to find the IQR here, I'll do 26 minus 21.5 to get 4.5 for my IQR for group B. Okay, so we're looking for the overall median of group A. So this is group A here, so I'll go over here to group A, and this is the median, the middle, 
and I'll go down to here and it looks like it's going to be 21. So my overall median for number C is 21. D, what is the minimum number for group A? Number D, what is the minimum number for group A? So I'm going to look up here and I see that the lowest point is 17. Okay, so then my answer for number D is 17. What is a higher overall median, that should say overall, median, group B or group A? So I'll look here at the two groups and the group that has the higher number on the number line is going to be my correct answer. So that looks like it's going to be, yep, group B. Group B has the higher overall median. Make a dot plot for the following data. What does it mean for the following data listed below? Pause the video and um, let's add up all the numbers and then we'll divide by the number of numbers there are. Find the mean. So what we need to do is add up all of our numbers and we end up with 135. All my numbers, I want to make sure to include the zero uh, in my data from my data set. So I do 135 divided by 26 to get 5.2. So it actually ends up being about 5.19 repeating and you know random numbers, but we can estimate that to 5.2, round that to 5.2. So we've listed the numbers in order from least to greatest, and now we just need to go ahead and mark off each side until we get to the middle. Okay, so we're doing an even number each time until we get to that elusive middle number, even numbers each time. We're getting closer, running out of numbers to mark off, which is a good thing. And we're left with five. So then our median is equal to five. Let's look at uh, the range of the data here. To find the range, you just have to do the biggest minus the smallest. So our range for number 10 is going to be 17 minus zero which is equal to 17. 10 asks you to find, for D, describe the spread, center, and shape of the data. Okay, so the spread is going to be when you have the smallest to the biggest number. So the spread is from 0 to 17. The next part says to look for the center of the data. Okay, well, if we look at our um, dot plot here, all right, well, the center of our data is actually two numbers. So it's four and five. And then it asks you what's the shape of our data. And we're looking for non-symmetrical, as you can see that it does not make a nice even bell curve there, especially because that's 17. So we're looking for non-symmetrical or not symmetrical. histogram of the data. Research online how to make a histogram. So hopefully at this point you're ready to go and you've uh, researched. Liz has started rating each movie she sees using a scale of 1 to 10 on an online site. Here are her ratings so far. Okay, so I've made my L chart or my uh, quadrant 1 here with my frequency on the left side and my ratings on the bottom. Let me explain to you how this works. So we're just seeing how often these appear in the data. Okay, so here I made um, one and two appear in the data just one time. Three and four appear in the data two times. Uh, five and six appear three times. Seven and eight appear seven times. And nine and ten appear just twice. Number 12. The dot, plot, the dot plot shows represents the number of cars sold at a dealership per week during the first half of the year. 
So we want to find the mean of this data here. Okay. So the mean here, if I were to write all these numbers out, I get this, and I get a total of 246. When I divide that by the total number of numbers, I end up with a mean of 10.25. For our next question, we're asked to find the median of our data set here. So we're basically just going to cross off all of our numbers until we get to the middle number. So cross them all off and then come back and see if you get the same thing as me. Put 10 as your median. Well, if you ended up with 10, then you are correct. What is the mode of our data? Well, that's easy. You just look here at the number that appears most often, which is 10. So our mode asks us to find the range. So we'll take the biggest number and subtract it from the smallest number. So our biggest number in this case is 22. And our smallest number is 5. So we'll do 22 minus 5, which is 17. So our answer is 17. 12 asks, if the owner of a car dealership decides to treat the value 22 as an outlier, which measure of center or spread is affected the most if the owner removes the outlier? So we're getting rid of 22. Well, let's say that we change, change our range here from 17 to just 10. That's a huge change. Doing some quick math, I see that that's for the range. I see that the mean goes from 10.25 to only about 9.7. And the median does not change. So then the one that's affected the most is the range. Tina's how many cars are sold in a typical week at the car dealership? Well, there's about 10 cars since that's the average. 10 cars. Okay, and since you can't have, since you can't have a quarter of a car, we have to round to 10 cars. So, uh, typical week. Ten cars sold. Okay. Again, since we can't have a quarter of a car, uh, we need to round to ten cars. When is it best to use a box plot? Describe a scenario. So it's best to use a box plot when you're finding the median. So a scenario is when you have to find the median. If I was looking, I said if I was looking for high temperatures in Alaska in July, and I need to figure out the type of clothing to bring on my trip. And I was traveling there. Okay, so that's when I would use a box plot to find the median. Is it best to use a dot plot? Describe a scenario. I think it's best to use a dot plot when collecting a small amount of data and I need to make a quick analysis about something. For example, for example, I wanted to survey students to figure out how many people were in their family also useful for quickly determining the range and the mode of a set of data. Study guide, thanks for tuning in. Good luck on your test.